Hi, Doug Bird here from Doug Best Tackle World with one of my favourite staff, Stuart Grice. Thank you very much, Dougie. How are you going, guys? Hey, guys, Merry Christmas. Yeah, we want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas yeah. from, um, on behalf of Doug, myself, and all the other staff. Um, we're very fortunate to have a very good... Um, they're all fantastic. Yeah, they're, they're great. Really good bunch of guys. Um, everyone's keen, everyone fishes, so pop down if you haven't already and come and say good day. And we'll guide you. That's it, always. <laughs> to better fishing, hopefully. Yep. So, uh, this weekend, Stuart, it's... It's actually Christmas Day tomorrow. It is. And then it's Boxing Day on Sunday. Uh, we will be here Boxing Day. It is our biggest sale day of the year. And um, we'll be having bargains that we only do once a year, which you probably know if you've been here before on a Boxing Day sale. And for those of you who don't, just watch our Facebook page, Doug Burt's Fish and Tackle World, Gold Coast. Uh, tomorrow afternoon it will be posted and, um, and you'll see what's available and what deals we're doing. And uh, but we're going to start with the fishery report today. We sure are. Yeah, so yep. we'll start off offshore. So, okay, this week's been not too bad fishing. We've had some good weather, but unfortunately, after Sunday it comes in horrid, and it's our one of our busiest weeks of the year in the shop here. But um, this week, this year, like last year, it's going to be horrid weather. We had the same last year. Um, that means we're going to have around about twenty to twenty-five knot southerlies. Torrential downpour, they're saying up to 800 mil, I don't know if that's true or not, um, between now and the 1st of January 2022 is what they're talking about. <laughs> and um, anyway, we don't know, but that's what they're saying, I saw the, saw the, um, the, the storm chaser guys, and um, it was a little bit um, over apprehensive sometimes, but 800 mil is a lot of rain. But anyhow, we don't know about that, we want to know about nice weather and what we can do in that nice weather, and that's what we're going to tell you about. So. This week gone, um, including today, there's quite a few dolphin fish caught. Um, for those of you who want to get out there and, and troll a few skirts around, like this type of thing here, little pakulas or whatever, uh, we rig them all up here as well. Um, they're a very good deal on, on uh, Boxing Day sale, and uh, we'll rig them up for you as well if we've got time. If we've got time to do it on Boxing we'll Day. The time. We'll make the time. We'll do it. We'll do it. Okay. There you go. We'll make the time. We'll make the time. <laughs> Stewie's up. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, that's the go though. Troll skirts around, get around the fads. The fads east on uh, fad 12, 12B and 12C have been fishing not too bad, but they're only rats. They're like small ones with the odd, decent uh, sort of size, I don't know, three kilo um, or four kilos the average, but there's a few sort of 10 kilo ones around a meter 20, but not, at, not that many dolphin fish in that size. If you go out a bit further east to the 50 fathom east, um, I think that's fat 11, I think it is. Uh, fat 11, uh, I think it's fat 13. Is it 13? Northeast 50, okay. it's fat 13. Ah, uh, it's yeah, east at the moment. Uh, yeah, okay. Fat 11's off. Yeah. We're always yeah, anyway. correcting ourselves. Yeah. It's, it's, it's one of those fads. No, that's right. Yeah, it's a fad on the 50 fathom <laughs> east of Seaway. I think my memory is on about 27, 54 latitude. Anyhow, somewhere in there. Um, and it's been really good, but it's a 40k run out there, folks. So you need to make sure your boat's able to handle that, and and yourself. And um, but the dolphin fish are there are a fair bit bigger. They're getting those on the skirts, also getting them uh, thrown out pillies. I made a pillies at the fad, and also um, there's a couple getting caught in live baits. But actually, most of the fish are caught trolling skirts at the moment, and um, that's out there. They're good size. They're a meter twenty average. Okay. Uh, the fads northeast 50s is not too bad, similar size fish, and the fad on the 36s northeast of Seaway has been a little bit quiet, only because there's always been about 20 boats around it. So um, if you're going to do it, I'd be going out to the three fads east or the 50s east if you've got a big enough boat and all the weather's suitable. Um, other than that, in close, there's been mackerel on Palm Beach Reef. Have you heard much about those two? Yeah, I've heard a few, a fair yeah. few. Um, a few Spanish caught early, which yeah. is good. Small um, ones, but not small, small ones, yeah. yeah. There's one caught off Southport on the Diamond Reef a couple of days ago, which is the first Spanish I've heard of this area at the moment. There are a lot of guys, so they keep things a bit secret. Um, but um, that's what we've heard so far. Yeah. Uh, mermaids have been fishing, there's a couple of fish there as well. Yeah, but most of bodies. It always starts at Palm Beach every year, folks, and then it ends up moving up to, it starts out around late November, and then by sort of end of December, it's moved to Mermaid and still at Palmy and the gravel patch, okay? And then sort of mid-January or early January, they start to come in off Southport on the 12 Fathom Reef out front of Seawell and then the 17 Fathom Reef and then by about mid-February or late February they're, they're on out the Diamond Reef and they switch. During all that time, if you're chasing Spanish, you troll hard bodies. That's how you catch them at this time of the year for the next two months and then sort of mid to late January or early Feb, 
they seem to switch to um, uh, liveys or, or trolling garis and saris and stuff like that on uh, rig bait rigs, okay? And, uh, but at the moment, the spotties, uh, they're getting those just catching, uh, using uh, half pillies, white bait, frog mouth pilchers, um, chopped up, um, obviously pilchers have chopped up um, yakas and slimies are okay as well. And uh, just anchoring up and burling up. Yeah, that's yep. it. Always worth having a rod with a metal tied on as well, 100%. just spinning. Um, Spin your belly trial because you continuously yep. chopping up pillies and throwing them out and throwing them out and throwing out your, your baits as well with sort of 3 hooks on the little wire hidden in the bait. And, uh, and they just come along and chomp up all the bait and they, and they grab your line, that's how it works for the spotties. Um, so give that a go down at Palmy. Um, there's plenty of room there at Palmy. It's a very big reef. You could fit a, 100 boats in there comfortably. 200 boats gets a bit crazy, but 100 boats <laughs> sort of squeeze in. Yeah, it's about there's, the norm. Yeah, there's a, yeah. Yeah, the norm. And there's a, um, you know, a couple of people there that want to get a bit aggro, but um, that's just we got problems. But anyhow, that's just the way it is. Get in there, do it. And uh, be nice and polite, and you will have a good day. Um, okay, we'll go eventually away from that. <laughs> There's a few snapper caught on the 24 fathoms this reef as well. Oh, this week, sorry, on the reef. Um, guys, just float lining early, uh, got a few. I haven't had much of the plastics. We tried plastics out there yesterday between our spinner crab drop, and um, we got some small ones, but nothing. Yeah. Massive, you know. um, but definitely worth a go. Um, 36s, um, the current's picked up a fair bit. But you will get uh, still the odd snapper and you get plenty of trag and flatties and and stuff like that and the 50s i fished the 50s on monday this week and uh, we got a few kingies and we got a nice little amberjack um, the current was running at 3.6 knots which is very fast and uh, we tried jigging it was quite hard but we definitely did right on the bait, bait fishing and um once that boldly picked up the other day i was a little running at about 4.2 4.6 knots which is like really fast if you fell overboard um, I oh, wouldn't be able to swim against it, that's for sure. No, that's right. Unless you're yeah. one of the marathon uh, yeah. Olympic swimmers. But um, other than that, uh, the guys, uh, I spoke to um, one guy without deep dropping um, this week. Um, old mate with the aluminium boat, I can't remember his name. He's in all the time, anyhow. Yeah. And uh, he got some flame snapper, and um, they got quite a few other fish as well. So the, the fish are biting, you just got to get down to them with that current. So it's a bit hard. But um, other than that, you could go trolling out wider in the deep fads. What we'll be doing this week on flying 30 knots subtly against the four knot current would be absolutely hair raising. So remember, when you've got current going that way and you've got wind blowing this way, the waves actually stand up and break and, and it's quite dangerous. And that starts at about uh, around 60 metres deep. And when you get to about 80 metres deep, it's really ripping and it's bad. When you get to about 100 metres deep, it's terrifying. So just remember that always subtly against the northerly current is running south is terrible. Um, well that's probably what I can tell you on offshore at the mm. moment. Yep. Anything else yeah. How'd you go spanner crab and Dougie? Oh, I've got to ask the question. Okay, we smashed it. Well, we did for the time we had, <laughs> which is one hour. So I tried to be, I had to be back in at eight o'clock and I don't know if you know, deploying spanner crab pots, put out eight pots, takes an hour. And by that time it was already 6.30. And then we went a real quick fish with plastics for 20 minutes, got a couple of fish nothing sizable. Then went back out and the first two pots that far had um, one little crab and no crab. Third pot in, heading from east to west, um, had one big one in it and then we thought, oh, okay. And then the next pot, we actually had about eight crabs on it. We got uh, three good ones. And um, then the next pot, exactly the same scenario. And then the last um, two pots, I think there were, um, had nothing in them. So they're in that middle area. So had we done a second drop, which is no time to do, the pots are in the boat, we're going home. Um, but I would have dropped my pots then north-south on that depth, and we would have started getting them, getting them in. One of my mates is out today, this morning, he got 39 crabs for the two of them, yep. and they graded, and they got some good crabs. And quite a few of our customers that we've been teaching are coming to the Spanner Crab Pots office, which we sell, um, and they got their sort of you know, 10 to 20 crabs and they're, they're wrapped, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah. the first time. It's not too bad. For guys, th oh, everyone that doesn't know, here's <laughs> one that we've prepared earlier. This is a spanner <laughs> crab pot. It's very flat. Um, bait always in the middle. Rope off to one side to your float. So generally 50 metres of water dug, so 75 metres of rope. Correct. Um, two floats on the top and about a metre and a half apart because the first float with a bit of current always pulls under. So you see your second float. Yep. And off the other side, run a brick or a um, small anchor or something like that. Just anchors your pots, you don't want them drifting. You don't want to lose gear, because losing gear is A, bad for the pocket, 
good for us, bad for the pocket, yeah. but as well as just the environmental thing, guys. So you want to try to get whatever you put out there. So do they get a run up and jump onto this? How does it work? Well, uh, or they climb it like a lattice? That's it, yeah, like a, it's like a, a lattice line? thing. Nah, yeah. so it sits flat. Oh. Okay. So, as I said, bait in the middle, so the crabs kind of march on, and um, when they're really on, they climb on and one will get stuck, and then the next one climbs over his back, and then Lip you rock. get rings around it, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's really good. Really good to get to the bait, actually. Yeah. And when you pull pots up, don't try and pull up by driving, say you've got a bit of wind or current, don't try and drive it off and pull out the line real quick because yeah, like an you rip them all off yeah and uh, you have to be very subtle and and pull uh gentle and, th and th you've got a lot of crabs on there you can weigh up to like 20 or 30 kilos full of crabs and even though it's coming up straight um it when you go down the swell it'll sort of pull or you go up the swell it'll pull so you've got to just yeah, give gradually it some, get it up take some yeah that's exactly right and then yeah. you'll eventually get the, the crabs up and quite often you see like a monster just hanging there, one claw stuck in there, and he's about to fall off. And quite often they do, you watch them fall yeah. off. So you probably dropped a few on the way up. If you go too fast, you drop many on the way up. So don't do that. Just <laughs> gradual. And that's about it for our shore. So, um, yep. okay, guys. So next Saturday looks like about Saturday week after the Sunday. Looks like about the next best day to get out there and, and have a fish to. Yeah. Yeah, at, yeah. This, at this stage. Depends on what the weather does. Um, what else we got here, mate? What are we going to talk about hey, now? Well, we might go back to work our way in. I like working our way in. Um, seaway. Okay. Seaway's been... So well, between, you've been fishing the seaways. You can tell yeah, that. So way. between both of us, we've fished every well, single day this I week. Have, I have flattered fish three times this week. Yeah. yeah. So we both fished Before Sunday. Work. You worked, You fished Monday. I fished Tuesday, Wednesday. You fished yesterday. Yeah. This morning we both had to work, so nearly yeah. every day. Mm. But um, I've been doing heaps around the seaway, uh, heaps of jewies, and there's still a few jacks around as well. Um, the jacks have been a bit tougher to get. The water's been a little bit dirty. They like that real clean water. Mm. But um, plenty of jewies. I've been jigging a lot of plastics. Um, bait's been a little bit hard to get on the close reefs. Um, plenty of pike butts, so you can always get some little hard bodies and catch pike around the back of wave break. And it's always an easy one um, if you don't want to shoot out offshore and grab some yakkers. If not, um, plastics are the way to go. So the gold this jigging grub, this is a brand new colour. I, they, would, they should have called this it Captain America, but I understand they couldn't have called it colours. It would be expensive. Yeah. So what is it called, Stuart? It's called the America. 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 Yeah. They ran out of um, font. No. <laughs> anyway. Um, it's, it's a good colour. It's a really say. good colour. I yeah. used it during the week, actually. I grabbed a packet on. Yeah, yeah, I grabbed a packet Monday. So I fished it Tuesday. Got a couple of jewies on it. And um, just fished it on like an ounce head with about a 6 o hook. Uh, it's quite a big plastic. And um, the jewel just woofing them down. Smashing them. Um, and then still heaps of dart and trevally and tailor around the end of the wall. That's your favourite dart. I'm still though, using my um, my fused prawn head, well, that little one there. Very natural. You can rig it from the back, you can rig it from the front. I rig it from the front until it gets chewed up and then I rig it from the back, get some more out of it. You should come buy another packet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. 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 yeah, deep pocket, short arms. Mm. Nah. Um, <laughs> and then uh, working in a bit closer as well. There's still heaps of flatties on the wall, Doug. So. There is, yeah. Like, do. yeah. We fished uh, so a couple, at least a couple of days um, in the week and, and on the weekend. And each time I fished for an hour, and we got sort of five to six flathead. Nothing under 43, 44, and the average was about 48 to about 58. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And um, the new squidgies have actually been going not too bad along there. So they're the new ones. That's uh, what? Colour is sunrise. Mm. It's really popular. It's a very good colour. Uh, it's been standing the out. They missed the tequila font on there. Oh, no, yeah. I know. That's right, yeah. And um, I've been throwing a few vibes on there as well. You do lose a couple, but um, when the fishing's a little bit harder, that bit more action is really effective. So. And how about up the um, rivers, mate? Up the rivers. Like mate, up the canals, which is Jacks. Say. Jacks. Yeah. Jacks have been going off, so heaps of broom and stuff for the guys fishing little stuff around the pontoons. So they were in the seaway, but they've moved back up. I think they've moved back up yeah. with a bit more salinity, a bit yep. more salt in the water. Water's cleared up a lot, um, in the canals that is. So they've worked their bay back up. Um, prawns, the weedless prawns go really good, um, just fishing them along the side of the pontoons. They glide really good. So if you look at a prawn naturally swimming, they always swim head first. They very rarely go backwards unless they're scared. Yep. And um, this just looks so natural. Now, this one I used, um, I've used at the reef quite a few times now. It is the gum. Yep. So if you ever want to take a, a plastic oven cast at the top of the reef for trout, and I'm not talking any shore at the moment. But it's, no, this it's is a bit of a, bit if of you happen to get field. on holidays. <laughs> yeah, that's right. This thing here. Golden carrot is the I call, it, I call it ginger ninja, <laughs> but um, it is an absolute weapon of mass destruction. 
Uh, we just caught, no, seriously, so many fish. That's so good, yeah. So many fish, and I got busted yeah. off heaps too. Um, but the, the action is just phenomenal. Yeah. Um, they're made by um, Samaki, and yeah. they're a great product, and they're quite reasonably well priced. Um, but we also use it on, for jacks around the pontoon, that's what I'm getting at. So really yeah. good pontoon lure, slow sinking. You can either just hop it really slow, hop it, hop it, hop it, hop it as you're winding, and just bring it along just below the depth of the pontoon. And when you get past the end of the pontoon, the jacks just smack it. Yeah. Um, I haven't done much of vibes around pontoons. I don't know if you've done that much yeah, of Yeah, sort of slow thing. rolling and stuff yeah. like that, it works not too bad. I generally fish yeah. them on the bottom around the rocky drop-offs and yeah. stuff like that. Jack's very popular, school dew inside, around the outside of Sovereign. Vibes work quite well. How about this sort of things too? Um, trolling the outside of Sovereign this time of year, you get um, good size, uh, good size, medium sized dewies, yep. and um, good jacks and a few hair tail and stuff like that as well. Trevally, a bit of an all-rounder. So mm. the old Samaki Reddicks, they come with BKK hooks. They're nice and tough. They fish them straight out the box. You'll never straighten the hook. Yeah, they're very similar to many other things. Yeah. Um, and they work extremely good. Casting a lot of pontoons as well. They do, yeah. Really good twitch bait. The bib that gets straight down about two metres and you just crank it along and pause and it'll, it'll shoot back up as, the, as, the, um, as you let it go. Let it, let it take the tension off it and then quickly bring it back down again. Yeah. And really, really good there. Yeah. And a, a huge array of colours. I mean, the colours are up, but it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. Um, out of the canals and like whiting fishing still been very good. So um, plenty of whiting around the back of wave break and um, that type of area. So you want somewhere with a bit of tidal flow, nice clean water. Um, have you been whiting fishing lately, darling? I haven't had time this week. No. I only had one day left I didn't go fishing. And, <laughs> <laughs> and my wife had me doing other errands. Um, but um, I know a couple of young, oh, I wish I could remember his name, really good fishers. We've got their pictures in Facebook again this week. They've been fishing up the foreshore at Labrador, which is a fairly big area of Labrador. It goes from Lowe's Creek down to Bugle Creek pretty well. So somewhere along that foreshore. And they have been absolutely smacking the whiting, like I mean to 43 centimetres. And, um, and lots of 40 centimetre whiting off the foreshore, which is not normally the scenario, um, but because they've all got flushed out of out of the Coomera and the Pimpamara and River House, do that one later. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's been really, really good. And uh, just using Yabby's um, very small sinker or no sinker. Now you will have to put up with toadfish and brim, but that's part of the parcel. But yeah. when you're pulling out every second or third fish or whiting like that, it's, it's a relative. Worth it. It's worth yeah, it. That's it's right. Worth yeah. it. So definitely give that a shot, guys, if you're land based and maybe. Um, I heard there's a few whiting down on the foreshore on my bay in front of the canals there. Yeah. It's been really good as well. Yeah. Um, and definitely fishing late afternoon, early morning. Yeah. Yep. So down like the end of, um, say, Columbus Drive, they're actually dredging one of the canals down there at the moment. So okay. it's always good fishing around yeah, a dredge yeah, when they're sure. working. Yeah. Um, flushes all the bait out and stuff like that. So Honey hole. Honey hole. Yeah. Exactly right. That's it. Okay, um, so what else we got this, Stu? Um, oh, another good jack lure. Could yeah, that's one. right. A lot of guys really skip, skip car seas as well as. Um, Here's some, uh, just for casting out with like a half ounce jig head on it. And the tail action is just ridiculous. Um, that fellow there is really, really popular. There are a few bait and um, I think Andy Spannon um, for Coast Watch TV just put on um, a picture of some bar and lot, like, heaps of jacks they caught on those as well, skipping yeah. them into under the trees. They skip really, really well. Yeah. That was Probably, up north, but... Yeah, it's up north, but they work, they work down here as well. You are skipping here if you fished up Narang or Coomera or yeah. Pimpama River or up Talbudger and, and uh, Grumbin. Yeah. Um, skipping around trees. pontoons is yeah, pretty pontoons good. Right yeah. too, Under right. dock lines and stuff like that. Around boats, just don't hit the boats because yeah, they might right. be a bit cranky. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's it. And um, what else in the broad water, mate? A few crabs, sand crabs. I've got a few sand yeah. crabs. I did that too this week. Yeah, the old man got a few sandies this week too. Some good ones. Is that so. your dad or mm. No, mine. Okay, my dad. <laughs> and, and Doug. <laughs> <laughs> Both so, old. No. Yeah. So yeah. I got a few sand crabs out in front of Bigger Creek. I yep. lost two pots, which I thought was not too bad for this time of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, I'll catch it one day. That's it. Yeah. Um, so there's a few sand crabs around. They're good crabs too, by the way, folks. Um, so I try around Sovereign Island. Nine times best. Uh, Everett Island's really good. The channel over against Courage is not too bad as well. They've been big tides, so there's been a bit of run. So make sure you got good rope on your pots and... Uh, and try and get them just at the edge of the channel so the current's not ripping really crazy. So get up on the edge, so it seems to be, it seems to be a little bit better. Yeah. Yep. 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 By keeping the deep water. Yep. And still a few yep. flatties throughout that middle broad water too. Mm, just look for right. clean water, top of the tide, bait, 
throw in little plastics and little hard bodies. Okay, well, that's probably about it for the broadwater. There's it. a few muddies. There's yeah. a lot of muddies around, but the muddies have been off and on and they've been hammered pretty hard. Yeah. Um, I think we need, after the rain this week, um, my, my theory would be to get there the first person to get out when the weather's suited. It's going to, they're going to yeah, smack them. They're going to get a lot of microbes, yeah. Yeah, which they did a couple of weeks ago, right? right. I was worried. Yeah. Yeah. Anyhow, yeah. That's it. That'll be nice and full. Fresh water, Stuart. Fresh water. The bass. 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 Okay. A couple of, we've got a couple of customers that have been getting a few cod as well. Mm. Um, Saratoga. Saratoga. Yep. Yep. The All of, of the hens. fresh water. Yep. The old fresh water trifecta. Yeah, that is the trifecta. That's that right. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, hens, Dougie, how's it been fishing? A couple um, of customers have been up Yeah, there. so I've got a few customers that go up there, or quite a few actually. Um, some of the boys have been using, um, obviously, um, like jigs, still getting on jigs as yep. well. Uh, like slow fall jigs around that 40 gram, 30 gram size. Um, and uh, a couple of other customers, a couple of gentlemen, got there with their shrimp and they catch their 80. I let them all go. Okay, I'm allowed to keep two. Got to keep it. No one really want to keep bass. Um, just go there to have fun and to study the bass. And yeah, they'll be catching like 60 and 80 in a session, you know, so yeah. pretty full on. Good, for, great for kids. Like, if it's, you got next week off, right? Everyone's got next week off, except for us. And, uh, and when the weather's really crud, like a, blowing 30 knots. If you got the hint stand, you can find spots that are just like glass out. Okay, and take the kids up there, um, fish a really small sinkers, straight into a hook, or you can use a float system if you want. The kids can watch the float and see if it goes under and set it quite deep below it. And uh, you use a lot of shrimp, and um, you get the shrimp in a little shrimp trap around some of the wheat areas here up the hints or other little creeks around here before you go up there and then get your live shrimp and go up. And it's great fun for the kids. And um, the ruling of, the, of so far as I know in the hens is that um, you can take even like a 200 horsepower motor up there, but you just can't use it. So if you've got an electric motor in front of your 200 horsepower boat, um, you can go fishing on the hens dam. Okay, it's got to have the motor tilted up and you've got to have the fuel on disconnected. Yeah, like fuel disconnected. I don't yeah. know if mine disconnected has been on it too long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it, yeah. I'm but sure yeah. if you just fold it over and cable tie it, it'll be fine. Something like that, maybe, yeah. yeah. Something like that. Make an effort. Leave yeah. your keys in the car, whatever. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. a good effort, yep. Yeah. Um, well, someone's out there on a jet ski, I heard. Mm, so now that works, but anyway. Yeah. Might be an uh, electric jet ski. Mm, maybe. Cool. I've seen an electric yeah. motor on a jet ski out here last week, actually. Oh, that's just one of our customers, too. Yeah. Yeah, you get that yeah. fitted. Mm. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, so anyway, get back to the Hins Dam. So yeah. um, at this time of the year, um, it's really good bass fishing. So you've got the east arm, west arm, you've got a boat ramp east side and west side, okay? Mudjabar side and also the Hins Dam uh, western side. And um, if you get up around Ian's Isle and they head up towards the back on the western side towards where the bridge is at Springbrook, um, all that area there's fantastic fishing. Bass, Saratoga, the odd cod. Yeah. Um, and heaps of little, little grunter things and stuff like that. Um, east side, which is over on Mudjabar side, um, you see the water tower, you see the boat ramp, put the boat ramp there, turn left with the electric, so it's electric outboard only, or parallel, if you've got a canoe or kayak, and head about one to two k's um, south, and you come to all the timbered area, and that's where you fish are in that area, okay, all the points. And uh, you'll do well. And, and to find the fish, quite often when we go there, we just throw out a couple of deep diving lures like that, yep. and we just... Well, you're just, only going slow, you're so you're going slow, that's right. Yep. So we try, we'll, we'll troll them behind the boat, the kids hang on the rods, it's good fun. And um, yeah, we hook up and then we'll go back to the sound and check it out, maybe drop yep. some plastics down. Um, if you are going to use plastics, um, the secret type plastic to use is what they call tea tails, which is just like a little tiny paddle on the end of a grub, but a, a straight grub. If you can see one here, that white one there is probably the best description one, the one up at the bottom. And um, that type of thing is to go, and you're fishing with about a it's a fairly heavy jig yeah, head, actually. Yeah, 3F to a half. Yeah, because you're, you're hopping it in order to fall real quick, hop yeah. it real quick. Um, and, yeah, do that. It works quite well. And you're fishing sometimes up to sort of 15 metres deep, so, or more. So you get it right down there. Um, and the other thing, too, Stuart, these rapals, like, these are like a work of art. They are. They are. Really good finish on them. They're a countdown, so they actually sink. So if you find mm. a school of bass on the sound, you can um, throw it out. You just figure out how fast it quicks. You can count it down and um, absolutely smash them. Yeah, yeah that's right. Twitch it in front of their faces, get yeah. that agitated bite. So I'll be casting those into the timber, not because I want you to lose them, but that's where the fish are. That's where the fish are, <laughs> yeah. And cast it in, I'll be letting it sink. As Stuart said, before you do that, when you exit that, uh, you pull it home or in the boats while you're waiting, watch how fast it sinks, and that's why it's called a countdown. You time it, okay? Hmm. And then you know it's going to sink two metres in six seconds, whatever it might be. Yep. 
and you count one, two, three, four, five, six, a bit yeah. slower than that. And uh, yeah, so cast it out, let it sink, and then it's just slow wind with a bit of a twitch, twitch, twitch. And whatever's following it, and, and interest, so as soon as you stop, it'll either nail it then, or as soon as you do the twitch, 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 it'll nail it then, okay? And, uh, and that's a little bit, they're beautiful. Yeah. yeah. But they're expensive, but they're good. They are, but mm. yeah, they're made really well. So good hooks, yep. you don't have to upgrade anything. They're a lure built to last. Mm. And Mondrian and Awonga, so we've got lots of customers heading up there um, from Boxing Day on. I mean, quite a, quite a lot, actually. Heaps. And Heaps. these guys, some guys we've got uh, our customers, and we did the same too at the time, but um, they're regularly up there every two weeks. Um, they go up for the weekend, they fish Mondrian or, or Awonga. Um, I don't know how many barra they've caught in the last sort of six weeks, but um, some trips I get six or eight for the weekend, but all over a metre. Yep. And the big fish, up to a metre 20. And like, you know, you pay thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to go to the territory to do that. I know they're saltwater one, and we're talking empowerment barra. But let me tell you, the power bar are quite as good, if not better, than a, a salty. There are a lot more big brutes, does that make sense? They're, they're fat, they're big, they're strong, um, and they jump. Um, yeah. And the ones up north, I've caught both over a metre in many, in both areas. And I have to say, I think this, the fresh fight better than the salt. Yeah, the, yeah. and especially uh, after all that rain, so they've had that fresh push of very oxygenated water, mm. and um, they're there yeah. and they're hungry and they're angry. Which anyway, is good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, if you ever get a chance to, you're going to come in and teach what to do, how to do it, where to go. Um, otherwise, get yourself up to Mondra and Lawonga, um, fish bigger um, shad tails, what we've shown you before. Yeah. That new colour uh, from Squidgy is actually, a, oh, from Saragang Squidgy is a yeah. killer, it's like a black and gold one. Very, very good. Yeah. Yeah, so give that a shot. Um, anyhow, we can help you all out in that gear. We've got the gear here. We've got guys going every week up there and we know what's working and where it's working. That's it. That's it. Yeah. yeah. So anything else you can tell everyone? That's about it. Yeah. Um, obviously, Boxing Day sale, biggest sale yeah. of the year coming That's up. It. One day. One day. Probably Sunday, by the time you watch 26. it. Yeah. Eight to five. Eight to five. Now we, yeah, and we've got a guy on security down there. Yeah, so car right. parks. Yeah. Only us, because otherwise we get all the hub town people trying to park. park. <laughs> yeah. Got plenty of parks. Yeah. Got eighty car parks, so we can keep you, help you out. And uh, we're here to help you and look after you on that day. You'll get a monster of a bonanza price. Mm. Very good. It'll be worth okay. coming. Okay. So until then, I wish all of you a very, very Merry Christmas, a very, very safe one. If you are out next week and during the holiday period, uh, please be careful uh, and please look after your kids. Unfortunately, I uh, saw the sad news. A little one drowned at Labrador today, which is very sad. And condolences to the family. Um, please look after your kids. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you.